Hello everyone, um, here to get my thoughts on Monday Night Raw that happened on July the 1st, 2019. A lot happened, so bear with me. Um, Raw started off with a huge bang. Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley, Falls coming. Kind of it was getting an awesome match, it was getting good. The ending, Bobby Lashley was up on the entrance ramp, posing for the spear. Braun Strowman, like the Flash, gets up, tackles Lashley, go for the LED board. Pyro goes off, smoke, electricity, people rush with fire extinguishers, smoke's clear, then the camera angle shows, like, the backstage of part of it. And I'm not sure, but maybe a rasher or maybe a producer goes through the curtain. You can see them, like, you can notice that they're like, oh, I'm not supposed to be coming through here. So, like, he ducks into the shadows, like, out of camera view. Um, they load up both guys, they both take them to... Separate ambulances. I hope this leads to an ambulance match. Extreme rules. I hope they don't leave it like this. They got to continue with the momentum it's going. It was a great way to kick off Raw. Um, Drake Maverick all night. He has a wife with him. Um, they were trying to get our troops title back. But he was just enjoying the show. Apparently. Um, before they go to the honeymoon. Eventually he pins our troop to win the 24-7 title. And takes off of his wife. You know our troops going to follow them to the honeymoon spot. It's a given. It's predictable. It's going to be stupid. Um, the club was talking. AJ Styles walks out. AJ says, you guys may have lost last week against the Viking Raiders, but you're getting close. You're getting better. The club goes on to say, well, it took you almost all match to beat Ricochet Styles, but at least I won my match. They make a bet with AJ that apparently he can't do it again. And Carl Anderson bests his age and wife on the line. That was a funny segment there. I'm sorry. Um, later on in the night, the club run into Ricochet. And Ricochet talks to him and all that. The club, you know, f says a few harsh words. Ricochet says, hey, do you guys want a title shot? Meet me in the ring. club says, no, no. We're, yeah, we're not. should be the ones you should worry about. No, no. Then they meet AJ Styles walking by. They twist some of the words Ricochet said. To make it look like Ricochet saying AJ's win was a fluke. He couldn't beat him for the title and all that. AJ gets mad. Fired up. He meets Ricochet right there. Sl just slaps him. Across the face. Rick uh, Ricochet slaps him back. Well, okay. More like a punch AJ did. But it it you can hear that. The echo. Um, AJ challenges him for the United States title. In the main event tonight. Ricochet accepts. Ricochet don't know why AJ's so mad. Because the club, you know, posing Houdini stuff there. Um, the Street Profits. Oh, my good God. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. But the Street Profits are now on Monday Night Raw. This is terrible. Um, the, the current NXT Tag Team Champions, and they suck. Like, they talked. They had two segments. One by themselves, one with Paul Heyman. And I don't understand. It's like, we're what, saying? Like, they just go off topic. They're no good in the ring. They're no good on the mic. They're, they try to say they're original. I'm sorry. If you go to YouTube, type in WWE Crime Time. You watch Crime Time, Shad and JTG and the Street Profits, you're going to see the similarities. It's not original. It's only been done. Um, Miz delivered a promo how he's going to get payback against Elias later on in a rematch of 2 out Free Falls. And he says he should be the one to take out Shane McMahon's reign of terror. End at me. Um, Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre come out. Last night. They challenged The Undertaker to show up. Undertaker shows up. Of course, McIntyre and Shane McMahon take off for the crowd. Undertaker gets out. There's thunder, lightning bolts, um, smoke. Undertaker says that he Roman didn't come to him for help. He basically was sick of Shane McMahon's ego. He said well, he had a little bit of respect for Shane McMahon when they wrestled at WrestleMania 33 and saw how in a cell. But he said that respect's gone. And he says Shane McMahon, it's gone to his head, and he's got to be the one to teach him a lesson. Um, that leads to a segment backstage where, sorry. Baron Corbett and Lacey Evans are talking about the mixed tag match at Extreme Rules. Apparently now it's Extreme Rules style. That wasn't a formed, but I guess it is because Michael Cole confirmed it. 
During that whole segment, you can hear the thunder in the background of the Undertaker's music going on. Um, Seth, Becky Lynch backstage. Let's talk about retaining the titles at Extreme Rules against Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. Becky, they make it into a comedy. Becky says that she sleeps with the title, so she can't lose it. Seth says she does sleep with the title, and it's getting a bit of a problem because he is in their relationship. This involved, this brings in Maria and Mike Canales. I forgot they're even around. I know they're on 205 Live, but it'd be nice to see them all raw, and there we go. Maria says that her and her man could beat them, so mixed tag match is set for after commercial break. That match wasn't all that great. It was one-sided. It was all Seth Rollins. He just beat the snot out of Mike Canales. He tags in while Seth grabs his arm and makes him tag in Maria. Becky Lynch tags in. But before Becky can touch Maria, Maria yells out that she's pregnant. The whole crowd goes crazy. Mike Canales is, like, shocked. Like, he says, how can you be pregnant? A Perry maybe it's not his? Um, she says that He's no good as a dad. She wishes that the man Becky Lynch should have impregnated her because he'd be a bad. She'd be a better father mom than he is. I don't know if the going weird is with us or not. Becky Lynch won the match for them, but she made Mike Canal step out with a disarmer. Um, Alexa Bliss had a moment of bliss segment with. Nikki Cross. She wants to thank Nikki for getting her in a match in Extreme Rules against Bailey. This causes Carmella to come out. Carmella says that Nikki Cross should be the one getting the opportunity to because she beat Bailey last week. And Nexa Bliss is just losing her. Everybody knows that. Nexa Bliss gets mad. Her and Carmella have a match. It's like a free second match. Carmella wins of a roll up. Um, then Nikki Cross wants a piece of Carmella. They have a very decent good match. Uh, right afterwards. Nikki Cross one of that swing and neck break as she does. Now for the match, her and Alexa Bliss, you know, celebrate. They go to the back. They're still celebrating. The announcer, the, the commentator there, interview person says, maybe Nikki Cross should get the opportunity to tell her. Alexa Bliss gets mad. They storm away. I'm loving the storyline. Having Alexa and Nikki, you know, pretty soon, they're going to be going at each other. Um, so that's all the segments and that. Now on to the other matches. The Viking Raiders. Took on Big E and Xavier Woods the New Day. That match was getting good. And then Small Joe gets involved. Kofi Kingston runs out. It becomes a six-man tag after commercial break. It was predictable. And it wasn't that good of a six-man tag. Like, Small Joe won the match. He choked out Kofi Kingston in there. Because Gigi Clutch there. Choke hold thing doesn't mean. Um, so him and the Viking Raiders win. Like it was not really special for that match. Like it was good, but it could have been better. And it's poor Xavier Woods. Every match he's in, he's like a punching bag. Like he's got good talent. He's got he's talented. He's an amazing talent performer. I wish this wish they'd do more with him instead of losing him as a punching bag for all the matches. So Cyro was scheduled to go on No Way Jose. The match never took place because a bunch of performers ran out, chased our truth around the ring to the back for the 24 7 title. Cesaro gets ticked off, delivers neutralizer on Nova Hill Say outside the ring, and leaves. Lacey Evans took on Natalia 1 on 1, Baron Corbin in her corner. This was a short match. Baron Corbin tripped Natalia when the ref was in Locust, and Lacey Evans wins with the rim was white there. Um. Two out of three falls rematch happened. Miz, Elias. These guys put on an amazing match. The both great talent performers. Miz won the first fall with Scott Crusher finale. Elias won the second fall with Drift Away. The first fall, the Miz won it. The only problem this match was the outcome. It was so predictable you could see what was going to happen. Elias ran at Miz. Miz ducked it away. Elias' knee hit the ring post. Miz snapped on the figure four and won the match. But it's nice to see the Miz actually win a match against one of the members of Shin McMahon's new posse. That's why I'm calling every member that's helping Shin McMahon out and his new posse members. Now time for the main event. AJ Styles ricochet the United States title. Awesome match. Match of the night again. Last week they stole the show. This week they stole the show again. AJ originally thought he won the United States title with a phenomenal forearm. But Ricochet's foot was underneath the rope. So referee, we started the match. Going back and forth, hard flying moves one after the other. Like they were keeping up very well with each other. Ricochet wins with a pinfall. 
I can almost start pin. And after the match, the club get up on the ring apron. Because they came out during the match. And they tease that they're going to attack Styles or Ricochet. Styles says, no, 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 we got this. And then he sucker punches Ricochet. So Styles has turned heel. Reformed with the club. At both time. Now the club could be news better. They beat up Ricochet. They deliver a magic kill. And Styles clash off the top rope. And they leave him laying in the ring as they stand over him. To end the show. The only thing I don't like about that was... It, was like, it reminded me of when AJ Styles portrayed John Cena years ago. He said it was just like the exact same moment. Like you could see it was going to happen. But it was still great to see now. So overall, Raw was good. The, like, the Falls Canaries match. Nikki Cross, Kamala match. The main event, the two or three Falls matches. They were amazing. Um, just got storylines going. Um, like with Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Bobby Lashley, Braun Strowman, that. Not much hype for the mixed tag was built. Um, the segments were... There were a few segments, but not a whole lot. So overall, I'll give Raw 6 out of 10 this week. Um, no Flyer 5 Funhouse. I didn't really see any Muppets. I'm going to watch a game, make sure I didn't miss any. If I saw, I'll put on my SmackDown Live review. Too sweet. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.